intricacies and some of the trade-offs. Can you uh, maybe highlight for people at home as to why why is Verosh a character that we don't see? Verosh uh, one highly selected, that he's a bit more of like a here and there type pick. No. No. All right, well then, <laughs> I'm just that kidding, was great yeah. analysis. We're going to go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Varesh, he has a lot of really strong points. Uh, his um, four jump ulti, uh, the battle rate, has been really highly sought after lately. People really want to go and punish with that ultimate since it applies that debuff, that judgment debuff, which is the core of Varesh. You want to be applying that damage amp and putting out damage as much as you possibly can while uh, also making your allies stronger. Uh, that's like the key to Varesh. But he's kind of hard and sometimes he can get ran down. Like if your counter's not procs and you don't have any energy, he's very weak to melee pressure. So that's why we don't see him like first picked. Um, but he is very good in the right hands and I think Dizzler is one of the best of the best at this character. Yeah, he does feel like a character character that when my team is slightly winning, I become winning a harder very yep, fast. Yep, yep. Uh, he's very oppressive when I've gained that momentum. It's just I need to find a way to get that momentum. And, you know, uh, because his escapes are a little bit more limited, as you said, outside of the counter and then needing the energy for his R to be able to move. He doesn't have a standard space bar. It's just a shield. Right. He doesn't get to walk away like most characters there. Nope. And uh, that's where that trade off's going to come in here. But we got the draft, ladies and gentlemen, between Impact and Pulse Drunk. We're going to get another Thorn here on the side of Pulse Drunk, at least not yet. It's a double Ulrich just opening. Yeah, Ulrich, Ulrich. A uh, good start here for both teams. Doesn't reveal too much. It does reveal that they want to play a little bit aggressively, but that should be no surprise. It's impact. They they like to go in and force pressure, and I really like Ulrich with Vague, simply because Vague always plays so aggressively. If you have that Ulrich that can back him up and go in with him, um, Godof will really set up Vague for success, which is really important because we've seen Vague have really bad rounds and bad games, and Impact kind of just crumbles without him. All right, well, then that's a good that they're going to be able to rely on that. We get the next round coming up with the Jumong on the side of Impact. Love that as always. And then we're going to get ourselves a Bako. So not too wild when it comes to these drafts. I feel like this is a bit more of what we saw, you know, out of the North American scene. Maybe the Jumong's a little bit wild, but that's yes. what we expect here in EU. Yeah, the Ulrich meta still lingering after the last patch. He's still incredibly good, especially with the Bako. Both characters just kind of go in. Bako doesn't have that many iframes to miss the space from Ulrich, so Ulrich can just kind of space very liberally. Um, and Jumong, very good at punishing these double melee situations. Like, if you are caught without an iframe, and you just get trapped in double rain of arrow like we saw last game, you can just melt. You will melt. You will melt. Yeah. Not that you can. You, in fact, very much will. Whether or not he took the battle right for the damage or not, I think chunks. Freya and Blossom is going to be the last rotation here, but we get ourselves the double support on the side of Pulse Drunk. You are sitting there with a unique expression, and yeah. I have to ask, what the heck does that mean? Uh, I don't know. This is weird. We've seen this with the older, but I'm not sure if Blossom can put out the same amount of damage that yeah. older can or have the same amount of utility. Of course, Blossom is very good. She does have that tree. It kind of functions similar to a... Um, uh, to the Chronoflex of Older, you can block some projectiles with it, but I'm not sure it's quite the same as it doesn't actually send them back. Uh, I'm just really interested to see how this plays out. Of course, I think Impact is a heavy favor going into this as they are one of the best teams in the world, and Pulse Drunk is kind of lower on the totem pole. They yeah. still have a lot to prove. Um, but they could punish... Um, Vague on his Freya very hard uh, when he tries to engage with the double support. And if Impact ever has to reset, they might just find themselves in a less favorable situation. I'm, to be honest, you know, again, I'm no expert here, but uh, from uh, my time in the world of Battle Right and what I've been able to learn, the composition on the side of Pulse Drunk, that Odor does not get replaced by Blossom very easily. That does not yeah, translate yeah. in a one to one ratio. Odor, as, you know, people like to kind of meme about, he is one of the best ranged assassins that kind of exists like, within the game, <laughs> yeah. right? Even though he is very much within that support role. And as you said, you know, the people at home, they're going to support you when it comes to your opinion and impact here. Uh, you know, they're pretty good at the video game. It turns out they, in fact, can hit those skill shots pretty well, and uh, not surprising to see you guys fall on their side. I guess they're all right. Decent. Yeah, you know, they're good enough. Eh, you know, eh, <laughs> everybody here, uh, I mean, they're better than about everybody watching this broadcast and definitely the nerds up here trying to talk about it. And that's, in fact, why they're a part of that battle, right? But mm. in case, uh, you know, you guys think if you're that good, you go and you, in fact, we don't even going to bring up the asset. I'm just letting you guys know you can sign up for the Rising Stars and that's yeah. a place where you can prove it for yourself. You can see if you're as good as Impact. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how this goes. I think Dizzler, he could really pop off this round. Of course, the double support uh, comp, they do sit back a little bit. It kind of frees him up to freely M1 and just kind of get those three sacks and pump out that damage. Huge damage just from his M1s alone. Like that 16, 16, 16. Yeah. It adds up really quick. And Dizzler, he's got pretty good aim. He's not going to miss too many of those. Yeah, he's a very good Jumong kind of threat there for the squad. Uh, one thing I was wondering is maybe with the double support, because Blossom doesn't have the damage, what else can you make up for that, right? I, I view it as like this. If you're going to commit to a, a double support composition in almost any game and situation, you're obviously going to go, right. I have better healing, I lack in damage. But you can sure. make up for damage through in other areas. It doesn't have to be nice. truly killing them. For instance, I can remove your damage and then make yeah. my healing that much better and then nice. that's going to be worth the trade-off. Or crowd control, I can make up for there. Yeah, Blossom, she does okay with the crowd control area and she does have the weekend, yes, but yes. is that enough to make up for it? And that is where I, I will tell you, in my brain right now as it looks, 
The answer to that is no, but I'm ready to be proven wrong. Yeah, you know, I, I'm really going to have to see. I'm not really sold one way or the other on this comp before I see it play. Of course, I'm not sure it will look as optimal as it could since they're playing against impacts, and I think there is a bit of a skill disparity here. Um, but I think the damage that Blossom puts out could be okay. Of course, that empowered M1 dealing 20 damage and the Bloom Boom hitting for 15. Uh, so we'll just have to see how well they coordinate. One of the trade-offs of and beauties of Battle Right beyond the fact that everything is a skill shot, which I feel like is already something where you can go, no matter how you know disadvantaged you may or may not be, you can just go, just hit a little bit more skill shots, and I already am going to be in a better position than would have been in the round before. Three, two, Here we got one. things kicking off, ladies and gentlemen, again, between Pulse Drunk and Impact. Pulse Drunk looking to get an upset here. Already going to have Ulrich going in with a double space bar offensive stun there, and the oh, trade-off between Dizzler. He's going to be able to get a lot of pressure there. Yeah, Dizzler actually didn't get quite as much damage as I expected as the Reign of Arrows were slightly off, but yeah. still, the trade is very favorable. The end cap comes out onto Godolphin. They push him back into No Man's Land, but he has that R available, and he is going to knock somebody up. He's going to have his space available soon, and he gets out safely with it. The double stun comes out from Biceps, but things are still looking okay for Impact. Yeah. Pulse Strong is doing their best to be able to hold on now. Impact pulling back, getting that orb control, going to claim the first one for themselves. Already got the Prowl down on Dizzler. Sephardot going to get a little bit of pressure there with the E. Damage coming out now. And we see the Frey ultimate going down with the Dance of the Dryads here. A lot of pressure Ooh. there, as we already see. Falling so very low. Going to drop the very first one. And, you know, Geek is Nerd doing his best to keep himself alive. Even uses the Gust. But it is all for naught. Yeah, sick play there. Double ultimate's going to be dropped on the side of Impact, and they find a kill off of it. Of course, that Dragon Slayer, as well as that Thunder Slam from Freya. Another Dragon Slayer coming out, going to pin the Baco against the wall and clean this one up. Impact able to look pretty controlled through a majority of that. I do agree with you when we, you were immediately like, oh, that yeah, the Reign of Arrows being slightly off made that trade-off going from like, oh, this might be a nearly dead Ulrich to like, yeah. he's actually pretty good. It's yeah. a, a pretty positive trade there. So good job by Pulse Drunk, able to hold on for a little bit. It was just once they regrouped, recollected, it, it didn't feel like they had that momentum to be able to turn. Things. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the beginning of the round actually looked a lot better for Pulse Drunk than I expected to going off of that. Uh, they actually had a 10% energy lead or HP lead going into the first door, but just great coordinated play from Impact and helping him uh, chunk him down and take a kill. Weekend thrown out onto Dizzler. Already burnt that space bar, so only Prowl available if he's under a threat. But right now, they're just turning into Sephardot, not really caring at all. Not going to be a problem. If, uh, in fact, the Baco is oh, the, the one going to die. Blossom falls low. Kind of in a corner right now. Oh, yeah, the double Reign of Arrows dealing so much damage, too. And the, this orb spawning impact doesn't even care. Finally, Godolf rotates back towards it to secure it for his allies. And, man, this aggression from impact, they're just not letting up. Dizzler and Bay continuing to run into him. And the Freya ultimate hits, too, getting oh. so much damage out. Oh, my goodness. And the end cap there to buy a little bit of time. But look how low Baco is. Geekish Nerd trying to do his, or excuse me, Sephirodot doing his best, but he was unable to do so. Geekish Nerd now trying to heal up the team on the Blossom. Another end cap comes in. Dizzler throwing out the M1, another 16 damage coming through. And Impact going to take this another clean round from them. My god. Sick ultimate there from Vague, securing or putting them in a situation to find some easy kills. And it's funny how much different that round looked. Of course, Biceps went in early the first round. He was the one that was aggressing onto Dizzler, but that time it was Sephirodot on the Baco. He went in, tried to create space against the backline, but he doesn't have the same healing capabilities as Biceps does. So when the Baco went in and got started to get punished by Dizzler and Godot, he was just chunked down 33% uh, HP like from the get-go. Got to be able to find a way to avoid that here. So do you do you put the Baco on that responsibility again, or do you go back to the original route? Do you I, say? I think you have the Ulrich go. Okay. I think the Ulrich leads, and maybe the Baco plays a little bit more patient. But as we see here, they're just going to play as a unit. This is another way they could do it, and things are looking pretty good for them. Going to be able to split Freya back, end up throwing down that Bulwark to buy a little bit of time. Gust used here to get that deep flight. Blossom's in a bad spot for a moment there. Geekish Nerd doing his best. Dizzler now. Gonna take a bit of damage as Sephardot throws him into the corner. The oh. Thunderstorm oh. comes down, <laughs> Dude. and the damage is there. I mean, Vega's looking to set up an entire highlight reel on Freya Ultimates in this <laughs> series alone. Yeah, someone clip this man quick. Put him on the Reddit. <laughs> Get him up there. But I talked about it. I talked about it. Veg has good rounds. Impact's gonna steamroll, and Veg is absolutely tearing up this team these past couple rounds. Got to find a way to be able to create that pressure, create that room without that trade-off of just such an amazing punish on the side of impact here. We didn't see the offense in the same manner. You're talking about this time it was more, okay, nobody's going to go in, yeah. maybe try and split the fray out. But even that, it, it just didn't seem like it was enough. Yeah, it seems like you do need to end up putting some pressure onto Dizzler or else he's just going to do too much supporting his ally with that rain of arrows and just constant M1s. And I think somebody has to go in. Things are looking pretty hard if you just sit together and let Jumong wreak havoc. 
Jumong to me is very close to the Three, whenever two, I'm left alone on an island and nobody wants to deal with me, I feel the best. You know, much like I feel like Ty is another character where you're yes. just like, oh, baby. Yep. Wait, you aren't going to attack me? Like, all right, this is going to have a good time. And Dizzler's oh, God. having that there. Nice in-cap set up against the wall. Yeah, and again, Dizzler just laying in, hitting so many M1s and the pressure from it, uh, as well as with Vague and now get off spacing in. They're just oh. able to do so much. The Dragon Slayer, it's consumed by the Radiant Shield, though, but still it doesn't matter as Geekish Nerd just gets ruined by an M2. That feel when an entire Dragon Slayer can get a great Radiant Shield to be able to deny it, and the round doesn't even look close. Impact. Yeah, right. Lighten things up. Four to nothing now. Look at that orb score. They didn't even bother with the orb. Impact is sitting in this one and pull strong. They're just like, whatever. We don't need no stinking orb. We want to fight. Vague coming in. He was like, you know, we've got already four of these in my name. I might as well lock in a fifth with that. Vague's playing ultimate. really well with this week. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely dominate. I feel like right now I want to sit there and spit high praise. But going back to the compositions, we see the double support. We talked about it. This has got to right, be slower. Right. Doesn't have the offensive. So I kind of looked at it and I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Freya, my first fear is that my survivability when I'm in looking at my opponent's side. But now you have dropped your kill potential drastically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my playground territory with, like, I had a jungle gym before, I've got a damn kingdom <laughs> at this point. Yeah, there's not too much burst to punish the downtime on the cooldowns of Freya. And we see her surviving very well on this back line, absolutely. And with this triple counter, look at the shields. They just simply can't get through them. Bison pulls back. Oh, this is really bad. So much damage coming out now. The double rain of arrows is a little bit off the mark, but it does force an escape from Blossom. But this pressure from Vague is not letting up. Blue team able to get back towards mid, at least he on biceps, but he can't get the orb as his allies just getting ruined. And the big double Damn. ultimate again from Impact. They get the double Dragon Slayer into double Thunder Slam. And my god, these guys are here to play. Baku ends up using the ultimate there. Good eye frame use and dodge to make sure it doesn't, you know, kind of turn things around. But Vague, huge plays there on the Freya. Impact doing what we would expect here with a dominant performance against Pulse Drunk. Again, to take it a clean 5 0. But yeah. seriously, that highlight reel. There's My goodness. There's not a better way to describe that than clean. <laughs> that was just very systematic play, very great punishes coming out of the side of impact. Uh, they look much better than they looked last week. And Vag on this area is a force to be reckoned with. I absolutely just, man, just love the amount of threat that we saw there, though. I, I will say, in the world of the double support composition, uh, you know, was the trade out there? We talked about the skill disparity. I think that's something that you got to be considering, too, when trying to weigh this. Uh, but to be honest, I actually thought it might be even worse than that. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be completely blunt. I did not think that the weakened capabilities, because uh, she, uh, Blossom doesn't have, like, a consistent crowd control or a consistent weekend. She doesn't have either one of those very well enough. Right. And she... Honestly, well, she does have consistent healing with the Q being able to make up for sure. whenever you don't have that uh, right click. But it's just that, that trade-off of not having one of those elements that you typically need with a double support all the time. And the fact that it's cooldown dependent made me just go, I, uh, based on my time of being a you know gamer and studying games, it, it, usually that trade-off is not going to be worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why the older works when, where the Blossom doesn't. Blossom has that good healing on that AoE tree, but you don't need it. You, when you're playing double support, you don't need that extra healing. You need something like the older that can really pump out damage consistently. And though Blossom does have damage in small bursts, it's nothing like older's. Yeah, and you know, uh, he might have the small burst, but who had the big burst was going to be vague on that, you know, Freya throughout the entirety of the last round. I am sure there's no way we did not catch a couple of those. Where's one? You know, opportunity oh a big dragon slayer too leading into that easy kill this one down bottom i think was when they got pinned against the wall yeah another big double dragon slayer into thunderclap or thunder slam my god these guys did it time after time it just felt like at this point impact was asking themselves like can we just make this as flashy as possible i know that wasn't <laughs> the case but oh i mean god. look at it it's honestly I've got a, I, like, I have an acidic taste in my mouth at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah, goodness. They're just trying to style, man. They're just trying to go in and make it look cool, and boy, did they do a good job of that. I mean, you know what? The best part about all of this is the fact that Impact put it on the show that they just did there against Pulse Drunk, even though it was maybe a bit more of the kind of expected result, is that we've got more action here that I feel like is going to be, it's not going to take a step down 